Thank you so much. Um, my name is Kathy Guzman, and uh, I am the Residency Program Administrator at USC, and also the uh, President of uh, ARINS, the Association of Residency Administrators in Neurological Surgery. So we're here to just give you uh, a little bit of a different perspective for some of the practical items. Um, joining me is uh, Colleen uh, Bruton, who's the uh, Program Administrator at UCLA um, and member at large uh, with our ARINS Executive Committee. Uh, Colleen, you want to say hello? Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all. It's great to see such a big um, group here joining us today. Um, we just wanted to um, spend a couple of minutes um, sharing a couple of things uh, with you today. Um, um, so, I'm sorry, I think that. Uh, the first thing that we just want to talk a little bit about is um, some things that were touched on earlier by Dr. Uh, Yang and some of the other presenters um, about general advice that we give to medical students. Um, one of the first things that um, we always tell our medical students is that you do need to know yourself. When you look at different programs, you need to learn what kind of learner you are, what motivates you, um, even just um, thinking about all the different emails and questions that I've gotten over the years, um, everyone wants to know, quote, what do I need to do to match? Um, and there is no magic formula. Um, and there's not, there's not a list of 12 things that if you do these things that, that you're guaranteed success. Um, but what is important is, is what do you love? What are you passionate about? Even when we were just hearing about research, what are the things that, you know, basic science versus um, clinical uh, research versus all of these different things, spine versus tumor versus all of these different types of neurosurgery. And one of the things that we like to encourage you is to know what you need. What kind of support do you need? What kind of support do you have? What motivates you? Um, and talking to other people, forums like today, um, and then do your homework. We're gonna have a bunch of slides at the end that we'll just go through quickly that have a bunch of websites because you need to educate yourself about the specialty. You need to educate yourself about um, the training programs, about the training itself, what does it require? Um, and then the application process itself. Colleen? Um. So we're going to touch base about uh, the interview process, and uh, we just wanted to highlight that deadlines are critical. It, we have a shortened application window this year with ARIS opening on October 21st. Um, for my program, that's a two and a half week window that we're accepting applications. So um, we just encourage you to turn in your applications as soon as possible. Um, and uh, the definition of a complete application to me means uh, everything that you have control over submitting. Um, this year is a little bit different and I don't think you're gonna have the same challenges that we've had in previous years, um, but oftentimes students wait, so I want to wait to submit their application until they have all of their letters of recommendation. Um, and most programs know the behind the scenes of uh, getting um, feedback from residents and faculty to get those letters of recommendations complete. Um, so please don't wait for those. This year, I don't think you're gonna have to um, be scrambling um, for those letters of recommendation. I think we'll be able to do it uh, quickly this year, um, but please submit them as quickly as possible. Um, as far as your publications, um, we understand that that's always in fluctuation as to if your um, articles have been submitted, if they're published. Um, just try to make sure that information is as, as accurate as possible. Um, it's always great to have um, multiple first authors and you know, high status publications. Um, so it's a combination of quality and quantity that is looked at. And um, the next thing that we really encourage is that you respond quickly. Um, in the past, we've had people who've had family members monitoring their phones um, to make sure that they don't miss any invitations for interviews. Um, I personally have tried to be strategic 
um, and the timing of extending invitations so that there's no East Coast versus West Coast bias um, as to when they hit. Um, but in addition to responding quickly to accept interviews, um, if you decide that there's a program that is not in your first tier that you're not as interested in, please um, cancel that interview as soon as you can to give your co-residents or co-applicants um, an opportunity to secure that interview position. Um, we also encourage you, I'm sure that you already do, but to treat everyone that you run into with respect um, and courtesy. This year with the virtual interviews, I'm not sure you're going to have opportunities for interactions with physician extenders and faculty support. Um, but I assure you that both positive and negative feedback um, for any interactions that you have with them, do um, filter back to um, the program. And uh, when you interview, we just encourage you to be honest in all of your answers and as natural and relaxed as you can. Um, I mean, realize that some of you have, you know, 10 plus interviews and it's the same questions. Um, repeated in a uh, similar format that it gets to be a little repetitive, but if you could just be relaxed and natural, um, we really appreciate that. And then um, our goals, I think, um, I'm speaking for both uh, Kathy and myself and all of the administrators, and you can jump in Kathy, but um, we want to do our part to help train the next generation of neurosurgeons to take care of patients, um, including your family members and ours. Um, and we want to help educate and support you so to ensure that the next seven years of your um, life are the best that they can be. And um, from our perspective, if we match you, we want to graduate you. So we're going to do everything that we can to make it a great uh, program for you. Okay, Kathy. Definitely. Um, so we just have a couple minutes left and I, I just want to encourage you, um, especially for you uh, fourth year medical students this year that um, are going to not be doing away rotations, you're going to be at home. So utilize those home resources, the program director, the faculty, the residents, um, us, you're the, the, every single program has a program administrator or coordinator, depending on what title the university has given them. Um, and then there are student affairs advisors um, that are within your university. And they're going to be able to give you some great advice, um, sort of generic advice, but for neurosurgery specific advice, please um, make sure that you know the people in your program. Take the time to go and meet them. So just really quickly, um, some of the resources that are available, um, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with these, and because this is being recorded, you can go back and see these websites, but neurosurgerymatch.org, which is actually a compilation website from uh, many organized neurosurgery groups that talk about overview of neurosurgery application process, programs, uh, medical student chapters. Um, some of the information on this site is not going to be relevant this year. So just make sure that, that you are um, paying attention to whether it was, uh, when it, the information was posted so that it's relevant for this year or in a quote, usual year. Um, the Society of Neurological Surgeons, most of you have seen the guidelines that were put out for the medical student away rotations. They have a lot of other things on their website for medical students as well, educational lectures, um, links for the Essential Neurosurgery for Medical Students Supplement um, book, policies for rotations and interviews. There's going to be a lot more information coming out for that um, over the next um, month. So please we will do our best to disseminate that information. You can always feel free to um, contact me directly if you haven't heard and you want to know what policies are available so far, or you can check on the um, Society of Neurological Surgeons website. Um, just for sake of time, we'll run through these. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the AANS and the CNS, the professional organizations, and then general information about applying for residency. Um, I'm sure your schools have already told you all about these, ARIS and the NRMP. 
and uh, general information about neurosurgery residency. Dr. Giannata touched on, you know, those training requirements. Do you know what you're going to have to do during residency? Because that's going to help you to pick um, programs and what programs you're interested in as well. Um, and the, so the ABNS and the ACGME. Um, so really, I just want to end up with, and those are all of our slides, but I just want to end by saying that we are here to help um, not only our residents, um, but also the medical students that, that we hope will become our residents um, in the future. So please feel free, um, especially at your home institution, to take um, the opportunity to really get to know that program administrator or program coordinator. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.